Four Nights of the Apocalypse Chapter 109 is out, and this was another fantastic chapter. And we're getting built up for this training arc for Percival and the gang, and I am all but excited for it. I cannot wait to see how this whole thing plans out. And Lancelot actually has a pretty good grasp of the group and what they need to kind of improve on. And it's kind of cool to see him play a mentor figure in this, even though he is a title character. And we get to see more with the Chaos Knights and them regrouping and trying to figure out a way to basically take down the four knights in this instance. But they're in a rush to, which we'll get into with the actual chapter. Before we get into this review, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make on this channel. Four Nights has been doing really well once more and I am very hyped because this arc is gearing up and once the action starts, I just cannot wait to see it all unfold. Without further ado, let's get right into the chapter. So chapter 109 of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse titled, A Trying Week. And I like that this cover image is really showing a bunch of misshapen trees from the demon realm from what I can tell and a knight in the middle of it which I believe is Rosebank. And so we cut to the beginning of this chapter with Rosebank ringing a bell that they have as it then leads them to the group. As Rosebank then calls out to the Chaos Knights as they all rush over to confirm if Rosebank is okay and if everything is alright and they notice that the armor is banged up but they're not hurt. And Rosebank just says that they're lucky. Rosebank then apologizes to make all them worry but more ledge then just says, eh, don't worry about it, I'm just glad you're safe. And Rosebeck notices Gawain tied up and unconscious on the floor in the cavern where they are hiding. As Mortledge states that that this person replaced uh, Rosebank and it is Gawain one of the Fornest of the Apocalypse. And Rosebank realizes a knight of prophecy like him. But Rosebank kind of stops and says, never mind what I just said. As Morlich just says, no one is going to kill Gawain since she's Arthur's niece, even though she is a Knight of Prophecy stated to doom Camelot. As the big guy with the three-faced helmet goes over to Rosebank and asks if they're okay, as Rosebank takes off their helmet, revealing their face, and revealing Rosebank to be a woman. Really cool character design if I'm being honest. And Rosebank states that she feels warm. Something's definitely wrong with me. As she flashes back to when Percival saved her and says, Enemy or not, I just can't pretend I didn't see this. And she's like, I can't shake the image of him from my mind. Well, Percival's got someone else that has a crush on him. So if we include on Nazienz, because we do know Nazienz ha might have feelings for Percival. And now Rosebank, Percival's got three people that have a crush on him. Which... I was not expecting this in this arc in particular, but let's see where this plot point goes. Anyway, the three-faced helmet guy shows up and says, Are you alright? It's rather chilly to me. If you have a fever, let me heal you as Rosebank. She's like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But wait till you all get a load of the crazy thing that I found. As Mortler's is like, crazy thing you say? What is this about? As Rosebank is actually about to show them that she did take a piece of the Coffin of Eternal Darkness... But then just says, hey, no, 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 it's, a, it's a, just this giant crazy insect from the demon world. It was sticking to my hand earlier. As everyone says, that's gross. As Rosebank has kind of like, kind of got a crush on Percival for being so nice to her and saving her life. So that combination confusing her probably. So either way, shows that they're not an instant danger for the four knights in the demon world. But let's see what happens. Though the eagle helmet guy was just staring at Rosebank after this, so maybe he's suspecting something. But for now, they're wondering what they should do next, since they don't really know much about the demon world, and they don't really want to act carelessly. Morlich says, well, they don't need the panic. They have all the time in the world right now, and in the fights that they've had, we know about how strong they are. We need to watch out for Lancelot and Tristan. Gawain's already in our grasp, and so they immediately think of the weakest link, Percival. He is clearly a step below everybody else, which, yes, I think we can all grasp Percival is the weakest out of the title characters. And this is a smart plan, setting up a mission to take down Percival, as they go on to say, if they lose even one of the four members, any prophecy that'll destroy Camelot is bound to fall apart. So they do have a chance to win. And for now, they have to rest up and build up their forces. Honestly, smart plan. Little, little problem that we the readers know. Percival seems to be practically immortal. He's already died twice. Once from 
repeated stab wounds and being killed by his own father in a very brutal way, and another, his neck was snapped by an assassin. So what they could do, I have no damn idea, and we still have no real clear way to find out how much Percival's hope powers can bring him back, how often and how strong they are, so there's still a lot for us to consider and think about when it comes to this. But let's see how this all unfolds. I'm curious to see what Rose, Rose Banks is going to do. For whether she's going to end up realizing how messed up the Chaos Knights are, and maybe she'll join Percival in the group, realizing that they're not bad people. Who knows? Or maybe Rose Bank will be a spy, or maybe she'll have a conflict. Honestly, if she has a similar dynamic like Pelgard, where it's obvious that Pelgard doesn't want to work for Arthur, but he has to for whatever reason, I'm all for that. But you know what else I'm all for? I'm all for seeing Pelgard again. I want to see Pelgard again. He is awesome. I want to see him. It's been 40 chapters, I believe, since we last saw him. And I miss that lovable idiot. Okay, back to the chapter now. We move on to a large cliff where Lancelot has the Percival Platoon. As he states that it's time for them to start training. As Donnie's wondering what kind of training they're going to have to do. So, Lancelot picks Donnie out first and tells him that he has to forge his telekinesis. Lancelot kicks a line on the ground and tells Donnie, Okay, stay behind this line, now lift up that tower in the distance with your telekinesis. And it's 250 feet away from him. He has to lift up that entire big tower with his telekinesis. As Donnie says, you know my magic only works on a 25 foot radius, right? And Lancelot's like, yeah, so do it. So, okay, this is something that I was expecting. Donnie does need to increase his telekinesis for a larger range and I think larger objects. So this is a really good training for him to try and like strain himself and level up. So this would actually make Donnie a very formidable enemy if he can literally manipulate and control people with his telekinesis from a large distance. So Lancelot's got the right idea. Next up is Nazienz. Telling Nazienz, you're going to run long and hard. As Nazienz like, me run? As Lancelot also puts in the condition, no help from drugs though. There is a joke in there somewhere and I, I just can't think of any. Anyway, one of the main reasons is literally just Nazienz is very useful when it comes to his poison, his adaptability to poisons and utilizing them. But, he has little to no stamina whatsoever, so it's very easy for him to be knocked out of a fight and winded incredibly quickly. And that has been a literal problem for Nazienz, and Nazienz isn't exactly the most built person in the group. Physically speaking, he's probably the weakest. Percival's being a jokey going towards Nazienz, being like, Come on Nazienz, want me to be with you? But Nazienz rejects Percival saying, This is my training, I'm sure you're going to get your own shortly. So yeah, it's very obvious that Nazianz is still upset and angry with Percival over his decision with saving the Chaos Knight in the previous chapter. But after that, Anne is called by Lancelot and she's like, Okay, what do you have for me? It better not be lifting weights or anything else boring. As he just says, the nature of your magic's transformed, hasn't it? And Anne realizes, wait, I didn't tell anybody though. How did you find out? But Lancelot's like, I did kind of sense it. As he goes on to explain the magic system of this world a bit more, stating that there are two families that magic types fall into. Either they power up over time, or they transform in a stepwise fashion. And Ons is the latter, basically transforming as it progresses, getting stronger. So that's actually really cool. As Persil's like, wait, you got a new magic? What does it do? But An knows that she has a new type of magic power, but she doesn't really know how to do anything with it right now and she doesn't quite understand it. Lancelot says, well, you'll spend this week grasping its traits and weaknesses. You gotta make it battle ready. And An's wondering, how am I supposed to train like this? It's easy for you to say that I gotta make this stronger, make it battle ready, as in the background, we have a panel of Nazians being like, run for a whole week, and Donnie's like, yeah, I'm never gonna be able to lift that giant tower. But Lancelot just says, okay, look, with spiritual magic, it's an internal issue to deal with. So we'll just rest up for now. Confusing On being like, Resting is my training. How does that work? Which, I think I kind of get it in the terms of, well, since her power seems to be more of a psychic one, in a, in a sense, around emotion, she probably has to go like through like internal self-discovery or something, or making her spirit stronger, finding something new, about, new out about herself so she can fully grasp her powers, because it does seem to be purely focused on truth and lies, 
and stuff that's hidden. So maybe there's some stuff with On that she herself has been like suppressing or doesn't even fully grasp or even realize just yet that she just needs to discover for herself. And that's what Lancelot's trying to grasp at. And now Lancelot goes over to Percival, the main character, asking if he's got a sword. Lancelot then takes his finger, pokes Percival in the head, and he's like, hmm, I see. He then takes his, his finger off Percival's head and walks over on the side so that he and Percival can have a bit of distance, and goes on to explain Percival's training. Stating that the main thing that I think we all kind of figure for Percival is that he needs to sharpen up his swordsmanship skills. He has to know how to use a sword, especially if his magic power is restricted or unusable, he needs to be able to seal the deal with his blade alone. And that's how he's going to train. But the way he's going to train is by fighting Lancelot for a full week straight. And to go with frontal assaults and take him by surprise as well. When they're eating or sleeping, anything goes. And Percival's like, are you really sure? Lancelot just says, and whenever you beat me, I'll turn it up a level. And you'll see when we get underway. We'll start with level one. So Lancelot's going with a step-by-step -step battle training. Every time the person manages to land a blow on him, he'll make things more difficult with each individual step. And this is really smart, and we'll get to see why. Because what's coming up next is honestly very, very cool. Because Lancelot then channels magical power into his hands and creates a poleaxe out of it. As Percival says that this is really cool, I've never seen him do something like this before. Which is a really cool application of Lancelot's power. He is the Knight of War, after all, so this is a really cool power that he has to literally be able to make magical power into a physical weapon which is honestly very cool for improvisation if he doesn't have a weapon just turn his magic power into a weapon I, it's probably not super strong as he had to maintain full concentration and it probably isn't like 100 purely physical but it's a really cool application nonetheless but then percival realizes something that he knows this battle stance as he it's revealed that lancelot is acting just like Tolsker, the Chaos Knight that he encountered at the beginning of the story in the Echo Gorge arc where they met Nazient. And remember, Percival beat him by using his magic power and turning it into a giant hand and a giant blade to take out Tolsker. So, Lancelot just saying, well, I can read your memories to copy his moves, speed, power, and habits. Everything except the guy's magic I can completely copy. Which is very cool. Lancelot then lunches at Percival, and tries to hit him with a barrage of attacks from his axe. But Percival manages to block them little by little, scaring Donnie in the process as he is kind of close by. But Percival says, you surprised me for a second there, but this is nothing to the current me. As he then hits Lancelot with his sword, breaking through the assault, landing a blow. As Percival lands a blow with his full force, he stated. But even though he hit Lancelot, there isn't even a scratch on him. As Lancelot says, okay, level one's clear. Next up, level two. As he then concentrates his magical power into his hands, there's a panel of just him and Percival, and the whole panel is dark. As he then takes three quick steps forward and then does a barrage of punches hitting Percival in the face, knocking him back, with Percival realizing who he's copying now. As the chapter ends with the reveal that Lancelot, with his eyes closed, is copying the Chaos Knight, McDuff. Ending the chapter. Forget being the Knight of War. The man is a literal war god. I'm go I'm saying this. That's gonna be the title of this video. Lancelot is a war god. I'm calling. I'm just saying this right now. This sounds so much cooler than Knight of War. But yeah, Lancelot. After reading Percival's mind, he was so proficient in copying the abilities of knights that he's fought before. And this is actually a really, really cool training mo uh, moment for Percival, as Lancelot, even though he can't copy copy the other's magical powers. He can copy their fighting style, speed, techniques, and physical abilities so Percival can overcome them. Because if we really think about it, all of Percival's enemies that he's fought up until now, he never really beat any of them one-on-one. -on -one. He couldn't beat Pelgard, he couldn't beat Tulsnor until he got the jump on him with magic power. Ironside demolished him. He could, he could barely fight one person from the Dark Talismans. It, it had to be a team effort every single time. Then we move on to... Uh, Leonis with Chaos Galland, he didn't really do much, all he did was do a finishing blow at the right moment in time. Then he just got one shot by Arthur, and he literally instantly died by Macduff without putting much of a fight during the Walnut arc. So, 
This is actually really cool. Lancelot's going to be going full training mentor montage. Every single time Percival lands a blow, Lancelot will turn into anybody that Percival has fought before and copy their fighting style, which is actually a really creative way for the protagonist to fight all their enemies. And this is only level 2. Macduff is their most recent enemy that killed Percival, and he's only level 2 from Lancelot's point of view. So what's going to be the highest level? What's going to be Percival's final hurdle? I think it's going to be either be Galen or Ironside. Though my money is probably on Ironside. Either way, I'm excited to see how this plays out, and we get to see more of Lancelot fighting, even though it's not him at 100% strength. This shows more of what Lancelot himself is capable of in a fight, and this is honestly something I'm very excited for. But that's honestly the chapter. I like how Lancelot literally gave all the members of the Percival Platoon their own unique types of training with, with their own abilities in mind. I'm very curious to see how Ahn is going to unlock and make her new uh, lie weight power, her new ability to be used in battle. I, I'm more confident that it's going to be more of a spiritual or a personal thing that's going to unlock her power to be fully under her control. I like a little brief... Uh, addition to the power system to make it a bit more fleshed out. It's not by a lot, but it's a nice way to flesh out this world's way of using magic. The Rosebank thing, I'm very curious to see what's going to go on with her character. Because, seemingly, she has a crush on Percival. I got no idea what that's going to mean, but we'll see what happens with that. And how the Chaos Knights are going to react when Percival is most likely a lot stronger than he would normally be post-training with Lancelot. And I'm very excited to see what happens with that next. Hopefully Gawain, I didn't say anything about Gawain in this chapter, I hope Gawain gets out of her restraints and makes it back to the rest of the group. Because I do not want her to be tied up and a prisoner for this entire arc because she desperately needs more screen time because I love her and I want her to do more. Because she is a total badass and she probably would have soloed most of these knights if she didn't get, up, get all up in her own head thanks to more liches, well, teasing. If I'm being honest. Which is a character flaw that I am very glad Gawain has because it shows her own insecurities that she needs to work past. But that's it from me and that's it from the chapter. I'm very excited about it. I like the training arc that's starting. I like what's going on with the Chaos Knights. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that. Last thing I want to say, I hope we get some training with Tristan. Because it, it was mentioned in comments from my previous review that Tristan should be getting more of a focus in the Demon Realm arc as... He is half-demon and Zeldris' uncle, and I completely agree with that. So hopefully, within the next chapter or two, we see Tristan training with Zeldris in the Demon Realm to get better control over his demon power so he doesn't go berserker mode, or at least last longer. But that's all I gotta say for chapter 109, and I can't wait until chapter 110. Let's see how long this training portion of the arc is gonna go, and if we're just gonna like speed run through all this, or if we're just going to get little bits of the training here and there. But what do you guys think about everything that's happening with this training arc and what's going on with the Chaos Knights? Leave your thoughts, opinions, and theories down in this comment section down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here. And I cannot wait to make more Fortnite's content. This arc is continually being really good and I cannot wait to see what happens next. And with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have an awesome day.